Uh, I am finishing a book about Ecuador that began um, like three years ago with a meeting to try to do something about an experience very interesting of the indigenous movement that creates a party or a movement that was called Pachacutic. I began to do interviews, interviews to Latin American movements, parties, experiences of local government. So uh, I did questions and I began to discover that we were in Latin America creating answers by the practice. Participation has been my, how you say, big topic all this time. Uh, well, then, and also the big problem of, of the political instrument. What political instrument we need to change the world in this new world? The parties that we applied in Latin America in the decades of the 60s, 70s, 80s were a copy of solutions that were not our solutions, that were a copy of, of Bolshevik solutions, of Maoi solutions, but they were not um, rooted, you say, in, in our reality. That's why I was so, so interested in Pachacutic. No? Well, so, in uh, this book, <clears throat> and happily, we invite uh, leaders of the indigenous movement. Uh, what we see first in Ecuador was the first country in Latin America where the indigenous movement became the fundamental protagonist of the fights, the social fights and political fights. Uh, beginning in the 70s, but especially in the 90s. I went there in the 90s, in the, in the beginning of the 90s, and the movement was very expanded, and really the indigenous movement in Ecuador has stopped, the, uh, has fight against neoliberal uh, measures, and has um, rise, rise the big topic about the plurinational state, because the state in all our countries, as you know, after the independence has been in the, our countries dominated by the Spanish uh, colonialism. The state that comes after the liberation, the independence, was a very um, blanco, mestizo state, a state that didn't and didn't give space for the indigenous. It was like the indigenous were something that was out of the conception of the state. Nor the language, nor the style, nor the education, anything. So the indigenous in Ecuador were the first in Latin America that came with the idea we have to fight for a different state, a plurinational state. And they were the vanguard of the fight against the privatizations and all these kind of things, and, to, and the defense of ecology, of nature. They began as indigenous movement to fight, but they discovered in the fight that the fight, the, the flags, you say, the flags, las consignas, la, los temas, no? um, that they were fighting for, were topics that interest to, not only to the indigenous, the stop of neoliberalism, nature, all these kind of things were topics or were themes that were something that the people, all the people of Ecuador were interested in. So they began to think about a political instrument that englobe, that join, that not only the indigenous but all the other sectors of the society of Ecuador that would be interesting in this place promotes sympathy of the society and other movements, and they arrive to take out the president of the, of the Republica. But this insurrection was not only the protagonists were the indigenous, but they succeed because there were big contradictions 
between the oligarchy groups, oligarchic groups, you say, in a power. So some of the oligarchy support the indigenous movement. And that's why they could get out of the president. No? Correa was a, a professor of the university, economist. He did uh, some advisor, advisor things to the president that came after Luther was the vice president, Palacio. He needed the advisement of an economist before being president. So he knew Correa as an advisor and invite him to the Ministry of Finance. Correa in the ministry, he was only four months, but he began to take, uh, to do things that were very surprising. First, he says the contract of petrol should be changed. We cannot give so much money to the foreign, uh, foreign corporations. Then he says, uh, we have to, to, uh, to revise the debt problem, the external debt. We have to, uh, so, and we don't want to have um, um, exigence from the IMF. These things were surprising. People in the country, you know, there was the sense of anti anti neoliberal so there was a reject of neoliberalism in many people. So this young person that take out these measures produced a very wide sympathy in the country. And he was very how you say a good communicator, so was always interviewed by the press. So when Palacios says you have to go because this is not my policy. You are too leftist. The people began to, to ask him, tell us what happened. Come here to, to explain us. No? And then he realized and his group that he could be the candidate for the next period of elections. No? And a group that began to go with Correa to the different provinces where Correa explained what he saw about the economy of the country. And people began to say, well, you have to be the candidate. And the people organized themselves. And when they were a minimum organization, they called them to come. They called Correa to come. And they began to, to construct an electoral movement. They attract people of the different parties. So, in the Pachacutic were not only the indigenous, they were also ancient militants and leaders of parties of the left. Well, Correa, when we produce this phenomenon of Correa, attract this militancy. So in Alianza País, it's true that you have citizens that have never militated, but you have also people that has the experiences of militancy in the past. The, the experience, for example, that was very important in Ecuador was the experience of the com, 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 Comunidades de Base de la Teología de la Liberación, uh, Christian community-based communities you know, of the theology of liberation that was very, the indigenous movement has been very influenced, but also uh, in the in the middle classes, in the cities in Guayaquil, the Las Comunidades de Base Cristiana was an experience very important. What do you do you think that Korea has good chances to continue as a president after the next elections? He is very popular, uh, nobody doubt that. Even the, uh, the people that has uh, that were friends of him and ministers of him and now are very critical, they know that uh, he has a big acceptance. And I ask to the people when, when uh, they say that uh, the indigenous movement against Korea, many people I say, but how you explain if this country has so many indigenous that Korea has a popularity so big? 
because if the, if the indigenous are very important in Ecuador, and they are so against Correa, should be reflected in popularity. And it's not reflected because the government has done many, not only they have taken all the flags, all the topics that indigenous defend, they are in the constitution, but they are doing things to favorize the indigenous population. You know? And these are things that, cosas que se ven. So the indigenous are seen. Do you think, after meeting him and after you know, all this history that you know around the topic, that this is necessary and good for Ecuador, for its future? Is this what the country needs at the moment? Oh, sure, no. That's, uh, I think that even those who oppose to Korea that are not of the right, thinks, recognize that the government of Korea is a big step in advance. No, this is um, something that the, nobody says the contrary. In general, so of the economical groups that were in the past uh, dominated. This is an advance. The problem is that it's very difficult for our governments, those who are more in advance in Latin America, to try to transform the situation, having the government as a tool when the power, the economical power, is in the hands. They have not changed very much, the oligarchy groups in Ecuador. The media, the majority of the media, are doing a campaign against Korea. No? So he has to, uh, and also one of the worries of Korea, and I saw it in the, in the cabinet, no? is the problem of the inherited state, the bureaucracy, the bureaucrats, the, the, the personals of the state. No? So they have laws that protect them. So uh, they wanted to discuss with the parliament a law to change the situation. So the limits, the limits of the, our states, our governments, for me, that I am studying this government is, is big. So I always ask, do you do a pedagogy of the limits? Do you explain to the people the limits? And what I am very trustful, say, confident in, in, in Ecuador is that I see that a very, a, a group of, a quantity of intellectuals that are with Korea in Ecuador, I see people very smart, very, uh, with many formations, but they're engaged. And when you're engaged, you experiment the limits. And you see that one thing, as my a friend of mine says, one thing, thing is the left that criticizes as an opposition, and another thing is the left that constructs solutions. We are very good to criticize, we are very bad to, pro to do proposal, and that is what's happening with the indigenous movement. And we need a left that construct with the government, pushing the government, because the government, the people that are in the government, has many, many challenges or many, many possibilities of being co-optated, corrupted, etc. So they need, we need, and I think that this is our ideal of, uh, and it's happening in Bolivia more, a government that understands that the pressure of the social movement is necessary to fight against the inherited state. But the movement has to understand that the government cannot do the changes from one day to another. And you know how much of transformation needs a plurinational state. Immense different problems. So to walk step by step is something that sometimes is not understood. And they say to me, for example, que Correa is against participation. All what I and I have asked to every of my interviewers, what do Correa think about participation of the people? And I have no testimony that says that Korea is against. On the contrary, Korea has always been pushing the laws, opening spaces for participation. Korea is always trying that participation is a democratic participation. 